Hello and welcome back to lecture number six in this lecture series on CCNA2 routing and switching essentials with me, Joachim Schauderstad from the University of Skövde. And the topic of today is that we're going to dig deeper into switch configuration and we're going to look at VLANs. Uh, and we're going to look at what it is, how we can use it to segment networks and how we can implement it. And also when you have a network segmented into different VLANs, you have to have a way of routing in between those VLANs and we're going to show how, we'll, how we do that as well. So digging right through it, uh, what is a VLAN? And uh, well, VLAN is essentially a way to logically segment groups of users or devices into logically separated local area networks. So remember from the previous lectures that whenever we have a bunch of devices connected to a switch, that will make out one broadcast domain and it will make out one IP network. Uh, but how but we can segment a switch using uh, VLANs and then have uh, have a switch house different broadcast domains and different IP networks. And also one VLAN can span over several switches. So we can say that uh, port 1 to 5 on this switch and that switch, that's VLAN 1. And then port 20 to uh, 24 on this and that switch, that will be VLAN 2 and so on and so forth. And looking on it a little bit further, if you see in the topology here, we have a switch network with three switches connecting to a router. And we have three pieces connected to this switch, and then we have three PCs connected to this switch. Uh, still, we do want PC1 and PC4 to be in the same network. We want PC2 and PC5 to be in one network, and we want PC3 and PC6 to be in one network. So what we do is that we configure three different VLANs, VLAN 20, 10, 20, and 30, on each and every one of the switches, and then we can assign the, the port belonging to PC to the VLAN that we want. So the benefits of this is that the devices or the VLANs are actually logically segmented. So this configuration right here would be the equivalent of having three separate switched networks, uh, only that you do it logically instead of physically. So the, the benefits of this is improved security because we can uh, logically separate network from each other. So we can have one guest network with maybe uh, with limited permissions. We can have one student network that, I don't know, should have no permissions basically. And we can have one admin network which, uh, which has access to a lot of permissions. Uh, another benefit of this is that we, we get reduced cost because we can do this segmentation without adding, uh, adding additional hardware, which is of course a good thing. Um, we get better performance because we get a way of segmenting our network. We can do that in a, a neat way so that, uh, well, so that traffic flows to where we want and so on and so forth. We get smaller broadcast domains, which also, um, which also enhances performance and we get efficiency and uh, in terms of uh, manageability. So before we move on to how we actually do this, I believe personally that it's easier to understand things when you see it in practice, but there is some theory that we have to go through. So what we're gonna begin with is to look at some VLAN types. And the different types of VLANs that we're going through here are switch side configured in basically the same way with, a few, with only one difference. Um, and that is the native VLAN that will come to in three points. So beginning with the VLAN types, we have the data VLAN. And the data VLAN is the common VLAN that is used to carry user data. Uh, and it's also common to have a separate VLAN for voice and management traffic. And the reason why you want to have a separate VLAN for voice traffic is that voice is all usually resource intense and has to have access to quite a lot of resources to avoid congestion because you don't want to have lag when you talk to someone. And therefore you put voice on a separate VLAN so that you can configure more uh, resources to that VLAN, use quality of service and so on and so forth. Uh, so then we have the default VLAN. The default VLAN is just like any other VLAN, but it's the VLAN that all switch ports belongs to as default. So whenever you're using those high-end switches such as Cisco, there is always VLANs. So every port is always going to belong to a VLAN. The default is that it belongs to the default VLAN, which is VLAN with the number one. Uh, this is a VLAN that you cannot remove, but other than that, it's the same as any other VLAN. Uh, then we have a native VLAN, and when you do switching like this, you see that every end device is connected to a VLAN. So faculty right here, oops, 
faculty right here that's connected to one VLAN, student right here that's connected to another VLAN. However, for the switches, uh, for the links between the switches, those have to be able to carry, uh, carry traffic from multiple VLANs. And to do that, they are called trunk ports. So these ports here are called trunks, while the ports connecting to an end host is usually called access ports. Um, so when we have uh, when we have uh, trunk ports, we have to have a, v, a native VLAN assigned to the trunk port, um, and well, that is basically a VLAN that is used for traffic that is not belonging to any other VLAN. Uh, finally, we have a management VLAN, which is the same as a data VLAN, only that it's used to for management traffic. So it's quite common that you have um, switch virtual interfaces belonging to the management VLAN. That's the only interface where you can connect using uh, SSH, and then you have to have hosts within a network that are management hosts that are connected to that VLAN. Um, so as I said, uh, when we have when we have different VLANs for the hosts, then we need the, uh, the links between the switches to be able to carry traffic for the different VLANs. An access port can only carry traffic for one port, or well, one port plus a voice, port, uh, plus voice. but when we have uh, links in between the switches, they have to be able to carry traffic for the, all the different VLANs. So in this scenario, the link from switch 2 to switch 1 and the link from switch 1 to switch 3, they have to be able to carry traffic for VLAN 10, 20, 30 and an 80 management VLAN, which is 99. Uh, so uh, for that we use what is called trunks. Um, before we move into, uh, into configuration, I just want to spend a few moments talking about VLAN tagging, because as I'm sure you understand, when there is traffic, uh, from, traffic from different VLANs sent over a trunk link, well, then the switch has to know what VLAN that belongs to. And it does that by tagging the frame, uh, the layer 2 frame, with a VLAN number that it be belongs to. So when a switch receives a frame on an access port, what it does is that it adds a 812 8021Q header to the frame, and this 8021Q uh, frame. I'm going to say dot one Q frame from here because that's what you say, what you call it usually. It adds a dot one Q header to the frame before forwarding it out the trunk line, and this dot uh, one Q frame holds, uh, among other things, the uh, the VLAN number. So looking at this frame a little bit more, you see on the top. Uh, of this picture we have your ordinary layer 2 frame that has a destination MAC, source MAC, a type field, uh, data and a frame check sequence. Uh, however, when we work with VLANs, so when the switch uh, gets a frame on an access port, what happens is that it puts a tag field in between the source MAC and the type length fields. And this tag contains a type, a pry, a SFI and a VID. So the pry and SFI, SFI, that's beyond the scope of this course, but the type field, that's a protocol identifier. And the most common one is 81,000 or 8100, which is for Ethernet. And then the most, most important is the VID or the VLAN ID, which contains the VLAN number. So this is how a frame with VLAN tagging would look when traversing a trunk line. And that's how the switch can track, uh, how the switch is able to track what a VLAN a package or a frame going over the trunk belongs to. Uh, so moving on with VLAN tagging, uh, a switch can in some cases uh, receive untagged traffic on a trunk and then that is forwarded to the native VLAN. Uh, and here comes some difficulties. So if no devices are associated with the native VLAN, then the frame is just dropped because it's no use sending traffic that doesn't belong to anyone, right? Uh, also, if a trunk receives a frame that is already tagged with a native VLAN, it will drop the frame because this is unusual behavior. So that is, conf uh, that is something that you just have to wrap your mind, mind around. Uh, other than that, you should know that you can actually configure an access point to, or an access port to use two VLANs. Uh, in this case, one will be for data and one will be configured for voice. And in this case, you'll have a topology that is the end switch to an IP phone and to the PC. And in this case, the switch phone link will actually be a trunk. So you will send data trunked um, from the switch to the IP phone and then you'll actually have the real access port on the IP phone going to the PC. 
So this is sort of a special case that you, that you do need to know about whenever you're working with IP telephony. So uh, we should also spend a moment talking about VLAN ranges. So a normal standard switch can at a maximum support 4096 VLANs. However, uh, you do call the VLANs in the range 1 to 1005 normal range VLANs. Out of those, the first one and the last ones are reserved. VLAN number 1, that is the, uh, that is the default VLAN. You can't remove that and it's automatically created. The last ones are also uh, reserved and those are for supporting token ring networks. And it's not something that we will, will work with very much. Uh, and you should also know that whenever you create normal range VLANs, those are not stored in running config. Instead, they are stored in a file that is called vlan.dat, and that is uh, stored in the flash memory, meaning that it survives a reboot and if you it survives a erased R config. So if you do a lab where you create VLANs, you have to make sure to explicitly remove the vlan.dat uh, file from the flash memory. We're going to look at how we do that in a little while. Uh, then we have the extended v range VLANs, which is 1006 to 4096, and those are saved to running config and consecutive, uh, and that's to uh, start a config if you do save the running config. So, with that said, let's look at how we configure VLANs, uh, and you should know that it is extremely, imp extremely simple. What you do is you go to a configuration terminal, and then you do VLAN and the VLAN number that you want to have. Uh, as you see in the top here. And you can also assign a name to the VLAN. You do that afterwards using the name and the name you want to have for the VLANs. Uh, then, if we want the switch to be accessible for remote configuration, or as we will discover later, if we want to use inter-VLAN routing using uh, using the uh, using layer three switching, then we have to create switch virtual interfaces. And remember that the way that we usually create a switch virtual interface is by the command interface and then VLAN and the VLAN number. So what we've done in the previous lecture was that we did interface VLAN one or interface VLAN ninety nine, but we can actually do an interface for each and every VLAN. And remember that each VLAN is on a separate IP network. So unless there is routing in between the VLANs, uh, a computer can only access the switch by IP if the switch has a ver switch virtual interface for the VLAN that the PC is on. So what you do is uh, that you do uh, IP interface and a VLAN ID. And now I'm actually tracking away a little bit because what I wanted to tell you about was how to add a switch port to an ID. And the way you do that is by using the commands uh, in the bottom table here. So you do interface and the interface ID to en enter the interface that you want to enter, like interface gigabit ethernet or whatever. Then you do switch port mode access to set to the switch port in access mode. And then you do switch port access VLAN and the VLAN number you want to assign the switch port to and then you're done. So before we go in and go do a demo, I want to tell you how to delete VLANs. So there are a diff few different ways. First, you can do yes, you know VLAN X to delete a single VLAN. But if you want to delete the entire VLAN database, you have to do delete VLAN.dat. There is also the command that is delete flash colon, uh, flash colon slash VLAN.dat, if I remember correctly. But delete VLAN.dat, that's a shortcut to, to that erase command. And that will delete the VLAN.dat file. Uh, so Something that you should note is that you should move ports assigned to a VLAN to a new VLAN before you delete it, because if you delete the VLAN that access ports are assigned to, it will, the ports will no longer be able to communicate. Uh, finally, you can do show a VLAN to verify that VLANs are created and assigned to the correct ports. You can also do show VLAN, of course, to verify that you deleted VLANs as you intended. So uh, this is the question slide. Uh, questions are for your teacher who's in class or for the comments field down here. Now we're going to go do a demonstration. So we're in Packet Tracer and we have this nice topology here with three switches and we have three PCs on this side and three PCs on this side. So what we're going to do is basically that we're going to create uh, the VLANs here 10, 20, 30. Uh, on uh, each of the switches and then we're also going to do a voice VLAN and configure the voice VLAN for the IP phone and we're going to do 
a management and native VLAN. So actually, what we're going to do first is that we're going to head to switch one and we're going to create all of the VLANs that we want to have, which is 20, 10, 20, 30, 99, and 150. So we're going to create them and give them names. So what we want to do is just to head to a configuration terminal and then the syntax is quite simple. So we do VLAN 10, name, faculty, exit, then we do VLAN 20, name, students, then we do VLAN 30, name, guests, and then we do VLAN 99, name, management, and then we do VLAN 150, name, voice. So that's all the VLANs created just like that. We're going to go create the VLANs on the other switches. So let's begin with switch two. Repetition is the mother of all learning, as I've heard. So it's good that we have to create the VLAN several times. In CCNA3, we're going to show you how you can uh, automate the configuration of VLANs, because I guess you can imagine that if we had 100 switches, th this would be quite uh, troublesome. So now we do VLAN 10, uh, 20, 30. Actually, you're supposed to be able to create multiple VLANs like, like this. Yes comma separating the VLANs that you want to have. I don't think that it works in Packet Tracer. Uh, no. Uh, but if you have a real switch with the high enough iOS, it should be able to create multiple VLANs at once like that. So now we just go VLAN 20, uh, VLAN 10, 20, I'm not setting any names, 30, 99, and 150. Then we do the same on switch three. So enter, enable, configuration terminal, VLAN tw 10, VLAN 20. I guess you uh, learned by now that you can do up arrow to get to the last command. 30, 99, and 150. And let's give that a name just for fun. So now that we've done that, the next thing that we want to do is, well, let's begin with just go do show VLAN right here to verify that the VLANs that we created are the correct ones. And as you see here, it is. So we have our VLAN 10, 20, 30, 99, and 150. I can also see show you here that we have our VLAN number one, which is our default VLAN. All ports are belonging to that VLAN as of right now. And we also have this uh, standard VLANs of 1002 up to 1005. Um, so that's it. Next thing we're going to do is to assign ports to these VLANs. So let's begin with switch two, because that's the simple one. And then we have, as you see in the table here, PC3 is going to be on VLAN 30, and it's connected to fast Ethernet 06. So what we do is that we go back to configuration terminal, and then we have interface, and fast Ethernet. 06 and then we do switch port mode access to configure the switch port as next port and then we do switch port access VLAN 30 and as you're seeing the full command here is actually switch port access VLAN but as you know with Cisco switches you only have to type enough of the command to make it unambiguous so if I go S there is actually a number of different alternatives so I can't tab complete if I add a W then there is only one alternative so what I, the minimum I have to write here is actually SW A for access and V for VLAN, and then the VLAN number. And you can also tab complete. So you see here V, tab becomes VLAN. Anyhow, continuing on with PC2, what we have then is interface, fast Ethernet 018, switch port mode access to make a Nexus port, and then switch port access VLAN, and the VLAN number is 20. So then finally, we do fast Ethernet 011, which is for PC1, and we do switch port mode access. You still have to type correctly though. And we do switch port access VLAN and 10, so that's it. 
So the final thing that we're going to do is do the configuration on switch three, the switch port assignments. So I'm putting that down there. So let's start from bottom again. And we go with the fast ethernet 06, which is for PC6 on VLAN 30. So we do interface, FA06, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 30. And then we go uh, interface FA18, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 20. And then the special one uh, that you see on Fast Ethan 11 going to PC4, we have an IP phone on the way. So let's just assume that the IP phone is correctly configured. And then we're going to go uh, interface Fast Ethernet 011. And we're going to do switch port mode access. And then we do switch port access. VLAN 10, so that's the easy part. Then we go switch port and see what we can do. So we have switch port and we actually have voice here. So let's go voice, switch port voice access, uh, switch port voice, VLAN, and then we have VLAN 150 that we configured for voice traffic. So now we actually configure an access port here that will carry both voice and data traffic. And the IP phone in this case will also work as a switch. So effectively, this line here is sort of a trunk that will carry traffic over VLAN 10 and 150. And in the phone, there is a switch that will send VLAN 10 traffic out to the PC and, uh, and uh, hold the VLAN 150 traffic for itself. So if we go back and do some show commands, let's first go a show VLAN. You can now see down here that we have some ports assigned to the different VLANs that we have, just as we configured. And if we go a show interface, false ethernet 018, Show switch port. Okay, Just hold on a second. Ah, okay, whatever. So this was this lab. Uh, we're going to get back here in a little while to configure these lines as trunks. But before we do that, we're actually going to have another look at the theory. So. Um, remember that we need to have trunks in between here for everything to work as we intend and to be able to control those trunk lines. There are actually trunks right now uh, as per default, as you can see that I can actually ping PC6 to PC3. No, I can't. Okay, so we have to do trunk lines. So we're going to do that. Um, but now the, the PCs are in different lines, so we have to configure trunks here. I thought it's Cisco Diamond Forest, but we're going to have to do it manually. But let's just go back to the theory and see how we do that. So configuring trunks is basically a, a two-way process. What we have to do first is that we, uh, actually, we actually have to go into an interface, and instead of doing switch port mode access, we do switch port mode trunk. And then we have to configure a native VLAN, um, that specifies the VLAN for frames that aren't tagged with a VLAN tag yet. So we do switch port trunk native VLAN and the native VLAN that we want to have. And then finally, we can also specify what VLANs that are allowed to traverse the trunk link. So this that would uh, that would add a layer of security. So we do that with switch port trunk allowed VLAN, and then we can do a common separate list of VLANs that we allow. So if we want to remove the trunk configuration, we can do no switch port mode trunk or no switch port trunk uh, allowed VLAN, or no switch port trunk native VLAN. There are also some verifications that we can do for verifying trunks. And maybe the most important uh, interface or command is show interfaces trunk, and that's going to show you what, uh, what interfaces that are configured as trunk lines. Uh, then something that is usually quite common is that if you follow this mode here, the first thing that you have to ask yourself if a trunk doesn't work is if the same native VLANs uh, are, uh, is configured on both ports, both sides of the trunk. If that's the case, 
you should also make sure that both sides of the trunk allows the same uh, allows the same VLANs. So the list of allowed VLANs is the same. Um, and yeah, uh, if you want to just troubleshoot the VLANs. Uh, because for some reason there is no connection among the devices of the same VLANs, then you have to make sure that you did the correct VLAN port assignment doing the uh, switchboard mode access and switchboard access VLAN. You also have to make sure that the VLAN is actually created and you do that with show VLAN. That's show VLAN is basically your go-to command. So show interface trunk and show VLAN, that's your go-to commands for uh, for verifying VLANs and trunks. So uh, if there aren't any questions, let's go to go back to the assignment. And what we're going to do is configure those trunk lines so that there is connectivity in between the different VLANs. And then we're going to go back and see how we can route between the different VLANs. So what we do now is that we just begin with switch two. And you see here that we have the port gigabit 01 that's going to be a trunk. So what we do is that we go interface gigabit uh, oh, one, and we do switch port mode trunk. Then we also want to do a switch port trunk native VLAN to configure the native VLAN, which is going to be 99. And we also want to do a switch port trunk allowed VLANs, and we're going to allow the VLANs that we have. So that's 20, 30, 10, 20, 30, 99, and 150. And that's it. So let's go to switch one and do the same for gigabit 01 here. So we go enable configuration terminal and then we go interface gig 01. And then we do switch port mode trunk to configure this trunk line. Switch port trunk native VLAN to configure the native VLAN to be 99. And then we do switch port trunk allowed VLAN to be 10, 20, 30. 99 and 150. So now this trunk line here should actually be up and working. And if I do a do show interface trunk, you see here that I do have a trunk on gigabit 01. It's on. It uses this dot one Q encapsulation that we've been talking about. 99 is the allowed VLANs. And we also have the list here of allowed VLANs. So let's finally do the same configuration at PC3. No, wait, we do have to, we forgot one interface here. So we're going to do gigabit ethernet 02, switch port mode trunk. I have to spell it correctly. And then we do the allowed VLANs and we do the native VLAN. So now we can do switch, to, uh, switch three. So again, we go configuration terminal, interface, gig02, switch port mode trunk, switch port trunk, native VLAN 99. As you see here, there is some error messages coming out because we have inconsistent VLANs. And that is because of the native VLAN being incorrect because the native VLAN is something else than 99 as default. So finally, we're going to do switch port trunk allowed VLANs, and we do 20, 10, 20, 30, 99, and 150, and that should be done. So let's just verify by do show interface trunk, and there you see that we have a port trunk going on gigabit ethernet 02. So now we should be able to do the ping that I failed with in the last demonstration. So let's see, in progress failed, in progress fail again. So okay, this is a little bit weird. Do we have IP addressing on the devices here? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Okay, so let's actually show you something here how we can troubleshoot nicely in packet tracer when we are not aware of what's happening. So I'm going to the a simulation mode down here and when I send a PDU then what's going to happen is that I'm actually going to see it traverse the different links. So we have our package sent. It's going from PC6, it's going down to PC3. And what is PC3 doing with it? It's sending it back. Sending it back all the way. And there it is. 
So okay, now I'm actually a little bit anxious to why it didn't ma why, it, why it failed. So now we see it going back. What happened first was the RPL gap, and now we have the actual ICMP stuff going on. And yeah, there is there it's successful. So we're attributing this first fails to the packet tracer for some reason. Uh, but as you'll see, if I do the same, let's speed this up. And I'm going to remove this PDU. If I'm trying to send a PDU between devices of different VLANs, it's not going to work. Because what happens directly on the device here is that it realizes that, hey, you're actually, okay, what am I doing? Uh, hey, you're actually sending something to a device that I don't know about. So, uh, Wherever you're sending your package, that's an, a different um, that's a different IP network. So this is not going to work. So what we have to do is that we have to have a way of route of routing between the different devices. So now in this case, PC6 can doesn't have a default gateway configured. So we can see right away that hey, you're sending something to a different IP network. I can't take care of that, so I'm just destroying it. Um. So that's being said, let's go back to the theory and look at some and look at intervlan routing. Uh, so intervlan routing then that's the process of using a router to route between the different VLANs because as we've been exploring this entire lecture, a VLAN is a logical local area network with its own IP network and to send data between IP networks we need a router. So the simple process is that we configure a router for inter-VLAN routing and we have the package sent up there and there the routing between the VLANs is happening. So there is actually three ways to do this where the first is called uh, legacy inter-VLAN routing. Legacy inter-VLAN routing is when you have a sp specific router interface for each and every uh, VLAN in your topology. So in this case we have VLAN 10 down here and VLAN 30 down here. Then we have the switch, and the switch is having an access port in VLAN 10 here going up to the router, and another access port in VLAN 30 going up to the router. And those in are two different physical interfaces on the router. The issue here is that you commonly have a lot of VLANs, like in our example we had five, and then this would consume five router interfaces, and even five router interfaces isn't that common on a normal router. So there is another way where you can do it with router on a stick and that we're going to explore uh, in the next slide and there's also layer 3 switching where you can actually let the switch handle the VLAN and what you will do then is that you just do a switch virtual interface for every VLAN on your layer 3 switch and then you will enable routing and the switch will see all the VLANs as directly connected networks and just do simple routing in between the VLANs. So let's go on to router on a stick. That's what we're going to work with in this course. So in router on a stick, what you do is that looking at this sample topology, you have your different PCs here that are conveniently on different VLANs. Then you have your switches with trunk ports, and then you have your router. And you actually connect the router to, uh, to a switch using a trunk port. So you have one connection uh, to one single interface, and then what you do is that you configure something that is called sub-interfaces. So for every VLAN that you have, you configure a sub-interface, and the sub-interface sub is going to have the IP address of the network that it's uh, uh, one of the VLANs. And then you use uh, this, then you instruct the router to uh, to tag this traffic that's going out the different sub interfaces with the Dohan Q tagging and we're going to explore how we do that just in a little while. So looking at the configuration, what we'll, what we'll do on the switch is that, okay, so this is a bit error, uh, this is an error in, in the picture. So I just took this from the Cisco material and there should only be one line here instead of two. Just remember that when you read the material later. So what you do is that you configure the VLANs as we just did. So in this case we do VLAN 10 and then we do VLAN 30. And then for the interface going towards the router, what we do is that we configure it as a trunk. So this is a trunk that has to be able to carry traffic for VLAN 10 and 30. So you can, if you want, do switch port trunk uh, allowed VLANs and uh, specify 10 and 30, but you can just, well, just do switch port mode trunk. It's a little less secure, but it works. If you do switch port mode trunk, it's going to allow any VLAN to, to traverse that line. 
And then we're going to configure some interfaces. And the way that we, uh, we configure some interfaces is that we begin with going into the actual interface. So in, in this case, the interface that we're working on is gigabit 00. So the first thing that we're going to do is to do interface gigabit 00 and then use the no shutdown command. So that's how we enable the actual interface as we remember from before. Then what we're going to do is that we're going to create sub interfaces and that's quite simple because as you see here in the output the way that we create a sub interface is by using the command interface gigabit ethernet 00, zero and then dot and a sub interface number. So that will create a sub interface. So uh, it's very smart as a best practice to have the sub interface names for the VLAN numbers. So for VLAN 10 we create a sub interface interface gigabit ethernet 00.10. 0 then what we want to do is that this the traffic coming to the sub interface will go over trunk line so it will be VLAN tagged and we have to inform the router about that. So what we do to inform the router about that is that we do the command encapsulation dot one q followed by the VLAN number. So this tells the router that there will be dot one q tag traffic coming on this interface. The final thing we do is that we set an IP address and an IP address is just an IP address in this sub in, in this VLAN that will work, work as the default gateway for this VLAN. So what we do is IP address 172.17.10.1 and the IP address number. Then we also need a sub interface for VLAN 30. So we do interface gigabit 00.30, again encapsulation dot one q in this case 30. So the number that we're having here is the actual VLAN number, it has to be that. Uh, and then the IP address and then we're actually done. So how do we verify this? Well, there is three things that we can do. Router side, we can do show VLAN, because with this configuration, the router should uh, now be allowed uh, be aware of VLANs. We can do show IP route to see that there are actually routes, directly connected routes to the, uh, to the VLANs. We can also do a connectivity test, see that devices from different VLANs can ping each other. And then on switch side, we can do show interface trying to verify the switch side configuration. So now we're going to do a demonstration of this, and this is what ends this lecture. So when we're done with this, I would like you or encourage you to do the challenge in 6.3.3.8 and also the challenge in 6.4.1.2. What we're going through in this lesson, this is vital switching stuff that you need to know about for the rest of this course and also to be able to do CCNA 3 and 4 smoothly and of course to uh, support your upcoming career in data communication. So let's go back and do a demonstration before we end. So we're back in Packet Tracer and uh, what we have here is a very simple topology where we have two PCs, one in VLAN 10 and one in VLAN 30. I've pre-configured this so that this switch port is in VLAN 10 and this is in VLAN 30 already. So what we're going to do for do now is that we're going to configure a route, router on a stick for, with router 1 and the first thing that we're going to do is to configure the switch port pointing towards the router as a trunk. So that's switch port gigabit ethernet 01. So let's head into the switch and what we're going to do is that we go interface gigabit ethernet 01 and then we go switch port mode trunk and that's all there is to it. So now we're going to do what we need to do on the router. So let's go into the router and as you see the only router port that is connected to the switch is gigabit 00. So let's head in there. And what we're going to do is interface gigabit 00, zero. and as we said, what we're going to do first is just do no shutdown to enable the interface. And then it's time to start configuring those sub interfaces. So as you remember, we need one sub interface for every VLAN and we're going to begin with configuring one for VLAN 10. So what we do is that we go interface gigabit ethernet 00.10. Zero, zero so that will create a sub interface for that VLAN. And what we have to do next is to tell the router that this is a trunk line where there will be VLAN tag traffic coming. And we do that with the command encapsulation. We tell the router how is this going to be encapsulated. It's going to be encapsulated with W1Q and since this is for VLAN 10 it's going to be encapsulated as VLAN 10 traffic. So that is that. Next thing we have to do is send an IP address and we just do what we would all normally do. IP address and we select one, so let's go 
10.1 and the subnet mask. And let's verify that the IP configuration is correct by looking at the PC. Uh, so it's 172.17.10.10, that's worked, and it has 10.1 as the default gateway, and that's what I configured, right? Yes. So now we have a subinterface done for VLAN 10. Next we're going to do another subinterface for VLAN 30. So we go exit to get out of the subinterface configuration, and we just go interface, gigabit ethernet, 00, zero and this time we do point 30 because we're going to do a subinterface for point 30. Again, we have to inform the router that there will be VLAN tag traffic coming this way, so we do encapsulation, don't want queue, and in this case 30, which is the VLAN number. And then finally we do the IP address. So IP address 172 17 31 255 255 255 0. And now this should actually be done. So let's do some verification on the router here. So first we do a show IP route and I just want to show you that this router is now having routes to the sub interfaces uh, or to the, to the VLANs here through the sub interfaces. So these are the only IP addresses configured on this router so it only has, has routes to the different sub interfaces but that's to be expected. So if we do a show VLAN you can also see that, okay that's weird. Show VLAN, you cannot see that the router is, uh, uh, has those VLANs in it, but whatever, it should work anyway. So what we're going to do now, just for trying, is to do a ping between the different PCs. The first one will fail. That's due to the RPLCA process, but as you see here, the second one succeeds. And I'm just going to show you in uh, and describe to you what happens if we do a simulation here. So we send a package from VLAN 10. So the package is now sent, and it's sent untagged to switch one, and now it enters switch one on the Nexus port, so it gets VLAN tagged. So it's tagged with, with VLAN 10, sent out over the trunk link, and the router sees, oh, nice, here is a package tagged with VLAN 10, and it's destined for an IP address in VLAN 30, so let's tag it with VLAN 30 and send it to the switch. The switch receives it on the trunk line, and then it removes the VLAN tagging and sends it out uh, to the PC on VLAN 30. And then the ping succeeds. So that's basically it. The ping is going back the same way, but we have no interest in looking at that. So this was uh, VLANs and inter VLAN routing. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoy the class. Make sure that you do the challenges so that you really, really get to the bottom of this. This is very essential stuff when it comes to switching. Uh, next time, when we get back, we're going to look at access control lists, how we can use routers for package, package filtering. But for now, this is it. Uh, thank you and goodbye.